happened. Kylan McGuff last year on Belmont, who transferred to Butler, played here at the Schottenstein Center. OSU won that one, and you see BG wins the tip. They're in their brown and orange unis. Ohio State in their white and scarlets. Start off with Paige Kohler, one-on-one -on -one against Jelani Cambridge. It's four 10-minute quarters. Velasco drives in with a right hand and gets the first points of this one for BG. You see the scoring ability of Velasco there. She, that was a tough finish. Got a bump from Gray at that end, but still was able to keep calm and put the layup home. And that says a lot, especially going up against Asia Petty down low when you have her defensively. But somebody to watch out for here. Jelani Cambridge, tough shot there. Miss and the rebound from Porter, but she is able to strike at any will. She's so quick, she's elusive, she can make incredible shots. I mean, in her collegiate debut, 31 points against Cleveland State. Yeah, absolutely, I mean, and she's really looked like a season bet to start here for the Bucs too, just with the way she's run the offense as well. Kennedy Cambridge came away after the loose ball. Foul on Porter. And partner, turnovers here is gonna be a big key to this game. Obviously, Ohio State. They can force a turnover at will, averaging about 26 force per game. Bowling Green coming off 27 against West Virginia. The Falcons are really going to have to take care of the ball today. Ohio State forced 32 against Ohio U, and they also had 59 rebounds, which is a season high. He sent back Kennedy Cambridge, flips it to her sister Jelani. 10 to go on the shot clock, 8.42 to go. Cambridge drives the lane, pull up Jay, yes! And there's that scoring ability from Cambridge that time. She just got to her spot, which was her elbow, and was just able to fall away, make a nice little shot. If you can get Cambridge to that elbow, it's going to be butter. Taylor Theory comes away with a steal. One on one. And that's that Buckeye press you see. If they can make it flip, they're going to do it quick. And the Falcons, they have to make sure they are being secure with the ball and not trying to rush things. That was a, another one where it could have been picked off. Just get past the line. Leia Harrison up. Just misses. Rebound up. Gherkin. Gets a second chance, fighting down low, and the Buckeyes come away. Here's Chance Gray. It's a one on four, so a reset for Ohio State. Back around the perimeter. Go down low, Petty. One on one in the post, tough finish. And Petty is so good with her back to the basket. The footwork for Petty can really sh show in these games. You saw that one, just a little drop step to spin away and get the bucket. And that's the beauty of playing in the SEC for four seasons. Two with LSU, two with Kentucky. And she comes into the Big Ten and one of the best back-to-basket bigs you're going to find in women's college hoops. Yeah, and I mean, you mentioned four years in the SEC. That is so huge. Not only you get a lot of games, you have a lot of experience to not only show it on the floor, but you also instill that in your teammates here. Taya Ellis comes in for Erica Porter after the turnover for BG. It's an early one. Ohio State on a 6-0 run the past minute. Cambridge drives at the screen. Chucks one up off the back. And here comes Velasco on the Falcons. It's going to be a lot of guard play in this one, partner, especially those two that you see here. But also have to watch out Paige Kohler, Mac all freshman team last year. She's got the face mask on today, which we noticed pregame pre and immediately started saying, looks very Kobe esque. Velasco's three. She swishes it through. Amy Job by the Falcons, get it to Velasco, and she was able to line up that three and connect, and that's a, a big bucket. If you're Bowling Green, you have to be able to match the Buckeyes to every step of the way to start this quarter. Don't want to go down big to start. Kennedy Cambridge drives in, gets the handle off, goes right to Gray. High pass to the corner for Theory. Gray one-on-one -on -one against Kohler. Petty. Stuffed at the top. Stay with OSU, but that's the down low defense that's going to have to be crucial for BG. Yeah, and that's Taylor Ellis, who's one of the best shot blockers in the MAC. Tenth in total blocks last year for her, and she's so far this year sixth in the conference in blocks per game. She can really be a force inside defensively. Also have to look at her rebounds. She's averaging yeah. 10 a game. Miss from Cambridge, but Theory with the O rebound and goes up with it. Yeah, theory that time, just no one really put a body on her. She was able to get that weak side board and second chance points. It's going to be so key for these Buckeyes. That was a huge offensive rebound. And the senior in Taylor Theory, she has been one of the best defenders in the Big Ten and a crucial piece in Coach McGuff's game plan for the past couple of years. Good switch from Leah Harrison. It's a one-point game. Here comes Jelani downhill. 
Scoop and score. And that was too easy. No one really picked her up in the half court. She was just kind of able to waltz down the lane and score. If you're the Falcons, you have to be like, make sure you pick her up at half court. And head coach Fred Shamil had talked about it. Do you see him walking with the suit at that far baseline? They play the same opponents. They don't play each other again, but they're going to be at the same tournament style. And sometimes that's what you see. And there's the five second violation with the Buckeye press defense already forcing another turnover. Yeah, that's the fourth turnover for the Falcons here in this one. And that was just good defense by the Buckeyes, really marking everyone. And Bowling Green just wasn't able to get the ball in. And it's going to get down to that point as well. They play Stetson and Arkansas next for BG. There's a misfire and a rebound for Ellis. But that's how these tournament styles go. And of course, the non-conference season, you're playing some opponents that could be at a little bit of a mismatch, depending on how it's played. They're going to give the foul to Petty on the reach in. But that's kind of what comes with these seasons, is sometimes you realize you're going to play teams that might not be at the same level. And Coach Shamil said it. We know going against West Virginia and then Ohio State is a very difficult stretch for this team. But he knows all about playing in a difficult conference. He was a assistant coach at South Carolina in the SEC under Don Staley for a while. Yeah, I mean, that's what, a, what experience to have there for Bowling Green, just to have someone who coaches at a program like South Carolina. We all know what South Carolina can do. One of the best programs in college basketball right now. So just to be able to get a coach who has that experience, that's going to be so huge for the Falcons. Cole drives in, stripped away from Kennedy Cambridge. Stay with BG, six to go on the shot clock. Kendall Moxie came in at the five as well. It's going to flip over to Ohio State. Yeah, Ellis that time for the Falcons on that entry pass. Just extended that right elbow a little bit to give himself some space to catch that pass. And far shot official Brian Enterline caught that immediately and whistled for the offensive foul. Sometimes you don't need that press at 94 feet that Ohio State brings. Petty down low again, a couple spins with the miss and the rebound for Harrison. Now BG pushing the pace with Velasco. She's got some moves in her bag. Pass to Kohler, one-on-one -on -one against Theory. Drive baseline up, and she's fouled. Jump ball. Oh, they call it jump ball, actually. My apologies. I guess Theory had got a hand on it while driving the lane, and, and that just shows the defensive prowess that she has. Yeah, that's just the IQ, too, just to be able to tie that ball up and the ability not to catch any skin and call the foul that time, but obviously the jump ball is going to stay with the Falcons. Moxie down low, no. Rebound Jelani Cambridge, and she's got a lot of speed in those heels. Kick up off the window. And she's feeling herself so far. She's been getting to the basket pretty at ease so far. And she had a big roar after that one, really starting to feel. Already at six points. She's three of six. Oh, one from three, but still plenty of time to go. BG tries with theirs, but a second chance opportunity for Ellis scoops it up. And you mentioned the rebounding prowess of Ellis. Ten rebounds on the season so far per game. That time just able to get right to the basket and put it back. And there's an offensive foul for the Buckeyes. And that's how you take it. When you realize Johnny Cambridge is going to come downhill with such speed, if you can get the charge to go, you're going to take it. Elsa Lemila comes in for Asia Petty. Lemila had a career game against the Bobcats. 21 points, 14 rebounds, and five blocks with two steals, and she gets it done defensively there, but turn back over, and Moxie has it. Can be stuck, go to Ellis against Lemila. Spins around, but the rebound taken away from the Finland product. Buckeye swishing, Gray, her three. Kohler moving forward. Gray had quite a game against Charlotte. She made nine three-pointers, which tied OSU's all-time high in a single game. She's really been on a heater since that point as well, and double digits in every game since. Now it's up to Velasco. Drive to the lane, and they call a travel. Yeah, just that pivot foot came up at the last second, and she was trying to look on the block for Moxie that time, who was wide open on that right block, but just lifted that pivot foot at the last second, and they're able to call the foul, but obviously just the eyes there that Velasco has. She knows Moxie was there, and she was going to be able to split the difference that time between some defenders just couldn't keep that foot on the ground. The Cambridge sisters come out. Madison Green and Ava Watson come in for them. The Buckeyes going with some freshman presence in Watson and then some grad presence in Green. Gray calls the screen, gets it from Lemila. 
Pass Madison Green, she'll drive out. Theory, three ball contested. Why not? Now that's only the eighth three taken of the year for Theory, but she's five of eight now on the season. And you said it, contested, but cool as ice, knocks it down. She's got such a clean stroke, and the Buckeye press comes away. And that can really help. The few that you shoot, if it goes in, why not? Same with Watson right behind her. Timeout, BG. That's what the Buckeyes can do, just a snap of the fingers, and all of a sudden, it goes from a three-point game to a nine-point game. Just that press for the Buckeyes can do that to you. 6-0 run for the Buckeyes in the past 22 seconds. They're up by nine. We'll step aside on Big Ten Plus. Buckeyes starting to feel it. One of the reasons they have been, Chance Gray, the season she has had ever since transferring from Oregon, of course, formerly in the Pac-12, now in the Big Ten. So she's going to face some of these similar opponents that she always does. You see the Buckeyes are pressing how she did last game as well. She had 20 points, five rebounds, three assists, and went four of nine from three in Athens. And now Velasco with a one-handed float, a couple drops. Off the hands of Moxie, and it'll go to the Buckeyes. You mentioned, obviously, we've mentioned Chance Gray a lot here for Ohio State, but Austin, I think just really the big thing is that the Ohio State offense has been balanced. Six people in double figures in that Ohio game. Everyone seems to be just clicking offensively for the Buckeyes, and it's been such a big part for why they're off to this hot start. And we asked Coach McGuff as well, coming off of the Belmont game, where it was only a four-point win, off-ball foul is called on Lemila down low, but... The game against Belmont in Nashville, we asked Coach McGuff, we said, hey, you know, it was, a, it was a closer game. You won 67 to 63. And then you go to Athens three days later and you win by as many as they did, 106 to 42. And I asked, hey, you know, what's, what was the game plan? And he said, you know, we've just been having good practices. The chemistry is getting better. And we started realizing, hey, you know, this is our game to play. Once we start realizing that, who's going to stop us? And, of course, it really showed out in that game. Deep three from Kohler. Off back iron rebound, Lemmy Lock. Green pushing pace, finds some space, contested, no foul called, but the two drops through. That's a tough finish for Green, because I mean, that was a very good defensive contest that time for Velasco, but just a better finish and better offense by Green. Ohio State on an 8-0 run, trying the half court trap. Ball in the hands of Layla Harrison. Jump ball. Ohio State has the possession arrow, so they'll come away with it. Christiana Kulachkowska comes in. She'll go in at the two. Chance Gray from Theory. Rebound Kohler on the misfire. Now BG's going to try to push down by 11. You can see Ohio State, the zone that they're running here, partner. How do you think that's going to help them in a situation like this? You're just able to get easy traps, and obviously you're able to, like I said, get those traps, force some contests, and obviously we mentioned the turnovers, how they were a problem for BG last game. And obviously they're trying to capitalize on that and keep that going this game. Velasco with the Ooh. foul, and one, count it. Tough finish for the senior guard out of Centerville. Yeah, I was gonna, you took the words right out of my mouth, partner. What a tough finish by Velasco. Take another look at it. Going with the offhand, the left hand, falling away from the basket, gets it up over Gray and kisses it off the glass for the deuce. That's that kind of work that you can't teach. That is natural scoring ability. And her at the free throw line as well, she makes it the three point play. With that, she's at 90% on the season. She was at an 89.7. So making that one go up to 90 at the charity strike. Only 30 seconds to go, eight second difference between shot and game clock. McGuff barking out signals. For Green on the isolation. She gives Theory a shoal drive contest and go to the line to shoot two. And that time, just a quick first step from Theory. was just able to 
beat her defender and Ellis off the dribble and get to the basket. And all Ellis could really do there was just take a foul and make Theory earn it from the stripe. We talk about that turnover margin as well. Already, Bowling Green with eight, Ohio State with three. Theory missed the first. She have a chance at one more when this one gets back into play. Just 18.8 .8 to go on the game clock here in the first quarter. Erica Porter coming in for Taya Ellis. Buckeye full court press. The elbow to Theory, and the Buckeyes have it. And you could see Coach Shamil, the other side, not happy, trying to work through with his fifth year forward in Erica Porter. Yeah, I mean, that was just out of control that time from Porter. You could see it. That elbow came extended, hit Theory right there. You know, in that trap, you have to stay calm and composed and not panic like that because it's so easy to commit an offensive foul in that kind of situation. 16 to go in the first quarter. See what the Buckeyes do. Similar play to last time. This time, Gray fakes it. Stop, pop, switch. James Gray. Buckeyes end four of their last five in the field goals to end the first quarter. And just a ball movement right there. Probably the Falcons, the WNIT, but obviously the goal, NCAA tournament. And you got, obviously, McGuff for Ohio State, who's had the success with Ohio State here in his 12 years. I mean, what a matchup we have today. Pitched away from Kulaj Koska, last off chance Gray. So stay with BG. But I agree with you there, is when you have a coach with so much experience at either the program they're at now or going to a new place, he said, our goal in Bowling Green is to get a banner back up that says NCAA Tournament Birth and MAC Championship. That's how he knew and knows that he can help out the fans. Jelani Cambridge with the pull-up swish. So quick, just getting into the paint with ease right now. She is, and she's able to rise into that jumper and knock it through. He's got that rise up capability. So does Kohler on the reversal. Taylor Theory came in, Asia Petty swipes, and the foul for Gherkin. She'll get a shot to make it a three point play. How about Gherkin right there, just kind of sneaking in and grabbing that rebound, just a strong finish to go up and finish through the contact. Taking a look at that, yep, there's a foul. And she's able to put it off the glass for an N1. Gherkin four of five at the stripe this season. And now four of six. For the Buckeyes, not afraid to play at a disadvantage numbers wise. You see how fast Jelani Cambridge can move. She's not afraid to go one on three, even one on four at some points. Which just shows the, the true potential and power of the number two player in the 2024 class. Chance Gray, her shot. She sinks another. Yeah, she's shown that over the last couple of possessions, just the ability to work to her spot and find that mid-range jump shot. Gets it up, Kulachkovska against Gray with the spin. Bounce down Moxie. Outside the perimeter, Velasco drives in, open lane. Amy Velasco. That was a good job by Velasco. Cambridge kind of came in looking for the steal and overshot that time, and Velasco showed the nice little spin move to work into the paint and finish with the layup. Asia Petty's got it. Now Kennedy Cambridge on the give and go. The guys are playing with a lot of juice right now and a lot of ball movement as well. Not afraid to shoot it. Cambridge thought about it. Pull up Jay. Made it a couple times so far. Awkward bounce. Shooter's touch can't hit that time. We'll see if Bowling Green can step back into this one. Still down by 11, 27 to 16. Velasco thought. Kohler with the mask. Misfire. Buckeye rebound. Gray's moving, her pull up. She's looked about as smooth as possible the past five games, Connor. Yeah, that she is, and if you're Bowling Green, Chance Gray's just getting to the to the free throw line area, kind of extended a little bit too easy right now, so you really have to meet her at the pass and make it a little harder for her right now. Kulaj Kosko went in contact with Johnny Cambridge. They see a kick as she was trying to drive the alley. Before the actual shot attempt, so it'll just stay on the inbound. A complete line change for Ohio State. Ava Watson and Ebony Walker coming in for Chance Gray and Taylor Theory. Watson comes in and helps out immediately. And now the freshmen are moving. Jelani to her sister Kennedy off the window. Yeah, they might just have a little chemistry that time. Good bounce <laughs> pass from Jelani to find Kennedy. And the easy finish. 
A kickball violation, but you can see Jelani happy with that press. She's not afraid to show her energy. And as a freshman, sometimes that can be very tough getting with a new program. Yeah, no, but like like I said earlier, she's kind of looked calm and composed. It's almost like a seasoned vet to start her season. Obviously, she's had a couple of those freshman mistakes here and there, but she just looks so good to start this season, like she's been doing it for four years. Paige Kohler through the contact. Can't get the touch. Up and around. The push out, they say, from Petty. So she'll get another foul. That's her third already. So Elsa Lemila is going to come back in four at the five. Yeah, that's, that's a tough one for the Buckeyes here because obviously you lose your starting big to foul trouble here now into this first half. you got to imagine she's going to sit most of this quarter, but Lemila, she's looked really good here, especially in that last game against Ohio. Now we're going to find out how she is down low against Moxie. Using the power and off the top of the glass. Ava Watson already has the one made three. It was right after Taylor Thier on the back-to-back -back tray balls. Here's Kennedy Cambridge with the spin up through contact, and she's fouled on the way up. How about that? Quick little spin move. Is able to free herself up in the lane. Take another look at it. Just lurking off that screen that time. Nice little quick spin on Moxie. And able to draw the foul. Layla Harrison comes in for Lauren Gherkin. Kennedy Cambridge, she'll have a chance to shoot too. And she sinks the first one. She started the game at Ohio U. It was the first time she started as a Buckeye. She started a single game at the University of Kentucky in the 22-23 season and then missed last year with an injury. So trying to get her footing again in the starting five, especially with Cody McMahon being unavailable the past two games. Kohler goes up, but a block from the guard, and the Buckeyes come away with it. Kennedy Cambridge showed the offense on that spin move last possession and comes back with the defense. She was able to swat it from behind. She comes jogging down with a big smile on her face too, knowing when you can do it on both sides of the ball, Coach McGuff's got to be happy about that. It's always cool as a guard to be able to go up and get that block like you're a five. Jelani, okay. Let that thing fly, why don't you? Now the Buckeye press going to try to keep getting it back. They're up 35-18. Just under 6.15 to go in the second quarter. They take the charge. Ava Watson planted the feet in the restricted area. And now you can feel like the Buckeyes starting to gain a little momentum here, forcing another BG turnover. And the Falcons now up to 11 here in this first half. And if you're born green, I mean, you just have to uh, slow the game down a little bit because Ohio State, they like to play with pace, and it feels like the pace here is starting to pick up, and that's going to favor the Buckeyes just a little bit. Ebony Walker has not had the most touches this game, and, of course, as I say that, she drives to the paint. But in her last game at Ohio, 23 minutes, two points, seven rebounds, six assists, and four steals. I mean, are you kidding me, partner? That kind of work does not go unnoticed on the stat sheet. And just so close for Ava Watson after the Buckeyes force another turnover. And just going back to that Walker situation, obviously just making yourself available in any facet of the game. You don't have to be scoring to make an impact. Watson, another one. Finding that corner hot spot in the tray ball's good. Redeeming herself on that layup, missed the bunny, but instead she'll take the three points on the next possession. Who won't, right? If you can have the ability to shoot it that consistently from the corner. Velasco tries with her own. Goes right to Lemmy Lot. And Coach McGuff even said, once Ava Watson starts feeling it from beyond the arc, she's going to be almost impossible to stop. When she learns the speed of the game, she's going to start feeling comfortable. She's already now two of three on those three balls in the corner. Yeah, she has been shooting the ball to start very well to start the season, but it's just keeping that confidence up. That's going to be the big key for her. If she keeps shooting, eventually the shots are going to start falling. And she averaged 24 points as a senior in high school at Buford High School in Buford, Georgia. And she gets the rebound and the foul on the ground. Velasco fouls her. And a timeout taken for McGuff. The Buckeyes, did. you mentioned it. You got to go up against West Virginia and Ohio State. These can be learning games for the Falcons. Even if you know the score doesn't go the way you want to, you get this high level of experience and competition here. And these games are so important for a program like Bowling Green. I mean, the thing that stuck out to both of us when we talked to Coach Shamil a couple short days ago, as Ebony Walker, he'll try her first shot from mid and make it. 
is his motto for this year's team. And we asked him, we said, you know, two words that you could use to describe your program right now. And he said, forward progress. And talking about that, he said, look, I understand I came from South Carolina where you're playing with McDonald's All-Americans, 1 to 15 in the roster. And you go to a school in a program like Bowling Green, which may not have a single All-American, but they are practicing and playing like All-Americans in practice and on the hardwood during the game. And he said, that's all it takes for me. And it's a five-second violation that causes another Falcon turnover. I think the big thing is they're showing the intensity. I know it doesn't show on the scoreboard now, but you can just see from watching this Bowling Green team, they're showing intensity, they're playing with intensity, and that's going to be so crucial when it comes down the stretch. Just being able to play with heart and play with intensity for the Falcons, that's going to win you some ball games. Watson finds theory to Walker. Lemmy lost. She'll try one. Tries to get her own rebound as well. It goes out to the guard in Velasco. You also have to realize that you're playing an Ohio State team that made the round of 32 last year, the Elite Eight the year prior, and the Sweet 16 the year prior to that. And this is a Bowling Green team that Fred Schmiel is only in his second season. You understand there's going to be that learning curve and that difficulty against some of these hard-nosed teams in the country. It's a shot from Cecil, her first of the day, and an offensive rebound from Harrison. She'll try once, go again. Jump ball given, arrow still Ohio State. But how about the, the hustle down low that time? Just able to keep it going. Harrison with a couple of big offensive boards, but just comes up empty that time as the Buckeyes. That's the second time here in this one where they've been able to draw the jump or the jump ball, should I say, on a layup for the Falcons. Normally, Ohio State, we've seen them do it a lot. The push from 94, they're not afraid to half-court trap you either, play a good rotation when it comes to defense, and, of course, the offense with Ava Watson really hitting it from beyond the arc. But this is an OSU team that their jump ball capabilities are there, but they get so many forced turnovers on steals that you don't see it too often. Another was Cecil. She thought about it. Hit Velasco, drive in with the behind the back. Now Kohler going around the world. Fouled from green. Obviously Kohler with a big hard cut to the basket that time. Draws a foul. Cole is another one who kind of has the nose for the basket. You're averaging almost 13 points a season. He's up from about 10.9 last season. So looking to take that next step here in her sophomore campaign. I mean, the Mac all-freshman team last year, she led freshmen in the entirety of the conference in points per game at 10.7, assists at 3.6, free throw percentage at 78, and minutes per game at 35. So her first season under Coach Shamil has been one where she knows that I'm going to be playing 95% of every touch on the hardwood. Lemmy Law's out. Ebony Walker's back in for her. Two minutes 45 to go in the second quarter. Madison Green, she's got two points today. She's one of one. Ebony Walker tries again, gets her own miss. Reset. Watson, does she have another? No, but the Buckeyes keep it. She's thought about it again, hit Gray. Buckeyes really going on the barrage from beyond the arc. It's good to see that they talked about from last season. One of the big things they had to work on was their three-point shooting, and Coach McGuff not afraid to let it fly today. Yeah, they've certainly been shooting it well so far. They've now taken 12 shots from behind the arc. Not hesitant at all, and, you know, they've been making them. Neither is Velasco, though. She drives in, uses the strong side hand on the low block. I mean, to understand that presence, keep it going. Velasco's got 12 points. That's leading for either team today. Theory finds Gray, gives her the screen. Difficult shot up mid, and a rebound for Cecil. I know you talked about that hard nose comment for Kohler earlier. Did you, did you mean to do that with her wearing the mask, or was that just kind of like off the cuff? Partner, I'm not that smart. It just kind of <laughs> just came out like that, but. Come I'll on, see. don't be saying that. <laughs> Fine, I'll give myself credit. I, I can be smart when I want to be. But just Kohler, it, it's kind of just a spur of the moment thing. But she is definitely a hard-nosed basketball player. And certainly the mask can certainly symbolize that as well. I mean, you can definitely see it. The way she's been playing defense, not afraid to cut into the lane. She's playing down low right now. The Buckeyes are going to try from beyond the arc. They've been doing it all game. Moxie comes away with a misfire. And now she's going to have a chance to run point here. Go against Gray, go up, blocked from the board itself. On the ground, jump ball. BG has the possession arrow, so stay with them. Yeah, Gray that time 
with a good job defensively in terms of positioning. Was able to cut off Kohler from really getting a good angle to the basket. She kind of had to take that layup at a tough angle. All she could really do was try to scoop it up and in, and obviously caught the backside of the, the board that time. And if you're the Falcons here, Austin, you got to get someone going other than Velasco. She's got 12 points, like you mentioned. No one else for Bowling Green has more than two. You got to get that secondary score going here in this game. I'm going to try with Velasco again. They get the jump ball on that. It would have been a travel if there was no jump ball possession. Either way, it was going to go to OSU one of two ways. That's good hands by Green. She was just able to get her hands in there and force that before Velasco could get the layup up. And the Buckeyes, they've been showing the hands here in this half. They've done a good job in contesting shots, not only blocking a couple, but just forcing those jump balls as well. You normally hear the term all hands team in football. Today we're seeing it here on the hardwood. A misfire from Walker in the mid-range section. The final 35 seconds, 10 to go between shot and game clock, and of course Velasco cuts right into the lane, dancing for another two. Shot clock gone dark. Final 24 seconds for Green and OSU. 45-23 for the Buckeyes. Watson in the corner, same with Gray at the other side. They give to Theory. She goes up with some swiftness. Final three seconds, Buckeyes pressing, gets it into Cecil. For the horn sounds, and the Buckeyes are up by 24, headed in. Beginning of this one as well, Velasco one-on-one -on -one against Chelani Cambridge. Here, Kohler is going against Kennedy Cambridge. Have it down low for Porter. Swing out, top Velasco, open tray, right to the hands of Jelani. It's got a misstep, but all good to go. She's moving it right to left. Chance Gray in this one, six points. Jelani Cambridge, 10. Taylor Theory, 10. Misfire for Jelani. Trying to get more of that. It was every time she's open, she feels very confident to shoot the ball, and that's something you have to like if you're Coach McGuff. No, absolutely. Just let her cook offensively and just get that confidence going. That's going to be so huge for this Buckeye offense and this team in general going forward. Kohler goes in. It was an A to B jump, but they're calling it on Petty at the other side of it. So that's her fourth personal. She's got to be careful here. Five fouls and you get ejected. I mean, yeah, not even a minute into the third quarter and picking up your fourth foul. That's just that's tough for Petty. And obviously, she's going to be subbed out immediately because I mean, you got to keep her fresh and keep her in this game. So just the foul trouble has just been tough for her today. And Coach McGuff immediately walks up to Asia Petty and says, that's a bad call. It's okay. That was a perfect A to B jump. There's not much you could do about it. Kohler misses the first. Lemila is going to have a handful of minutes in this one as well. Both miss. Lemila comes away with a rebound. Now the Cambridge sisters moving the offense. Chilani, Gray, wide open in the corner. Don't let her get hot from beyond the arc. We've seen her do it time and time again. And it doesn't get much more wide open than that one was. Velasco stop and go. Thought about it. Bullets to left Kohler. Offense is playing around the world. Harrison now has it. Back to Velasco. The step through. She pushes in and out. Theory with a rebound. And here comes Gray on the fast break. One on three. Step through. Off the window. And the foul. How about that one from Chance Gray? The smooth little Euro to get into the lane and then just finishes on the reverse layup. That one was pretty silky. I mean, she's got the three ball capabilities and then the smooth move all the way into the paint. And it's that three point chance, 53-23 OSU leads. Everyone's stepping up so far in this one for Ohio State. They get it past the trap, past the timeline. You can see it's that zone that we talked about. They're running a 2-3 right now, partner. Even having Elsa Lemila, the five, play some of the perimeter. Well, they're trying to make Bowling Green hit their shots from outside. And that's something that the Falcons have struggled with. One for six from three so far. Drive baseline over the cup. Right to Chance Gray, the Oregon transfer. Jelani Cambridge. With the step, running by, push off, jumper, in and out. It comes away with that after being pushed away from Kennedy Cambridge. And a foul right there on Jelani. Yeah, Cambridge that time, a little too aggressive that time, trying to swarm towards that ball and disable. That's a pretty clear-cut foul right there. 
Third foul for Jelani as well in this one. So Ava Watson has to be ready on it. And Kennedy, her sister, comes away all alone. Kennedy. It's about as easy as it's going to get running to the car. Uh, she had no one up within probably about 20 feet of her. She took a look behind her, and she's able to cruise to the basket and lay that one home. Layla Harrison hits corner. Gherkin, three. Very close. Looked like it last touched Harrison. They say it was Cambridge, so it'll stay with BGSU. Emily Cecil comes in for Paige Kohler, who take a couple minutes on the bench. Inbound, they're trying to stay low. Erica Porter, the fifth year, going up against the freshman and winning the battle. A little bit of that veteran experience right there, which is able to free herself up, get that space on Lemila and put that one home. Lemila can space the floor, though. So if you're Erica Porter, you got to be careful. But the Buckeyes can do it with anybody. And that time it was Chance Gray. Yeah, Chance Gray starting to get going here. Now up to 15 points here in this one, shooting over 50% from the field. 6 of 11, 2 of 6 from 3. I mean, when you have the capability to shoot 26 feet plus consistently, that says a lot about your game. Bowling Green's having those same opportunities, just not getting the shots to fall for them. Now Jelani pushing the pace. Gray, Trey ball again. It's like 7-11, she's always open. Grab yourself a slushy. That's another three ball. And a jump ball goes. Ohio State with the arrow. Oh, well, you mentioned she's always been open. She's just finding that space right now, and she's starting to hit. Started a little slow from three. Gray did today, but she's made her last cup one. It's a 6-0 run for the Buckeyes. She's got 18 points in this one with three rebounds and a steal in 19 minutes. She's played extremely well. She's dishing it out, finding with screens, hit the down low pass. Lemila on the ground, misses with her own offensive rebound. Try again. That time she can't get it. Porter comes away. This Buckeye press, they're really pushing it now, and Lemila with the block. It's just uh, the 6-4 frame, that what an asset that is to have inside for the Buckeyes. Able to get blocks like that, just use the long arms to reach over and get that one. I mean, she had five in her last game against the Bobcats. And when you get her down low, it's, it's tough to stop her. She's got two in this one already. Rebound goes overhead, push back out. Velasco, some tough contact on the ball, and Kennedy Cambridge comes away. Now moving, Lob, Theory, off window, in the face of Kohler. And that was all set up, Austin, by Kennedy Cameron. She stood like a baseball player on that previous thing, just to get that loose ball in the rebound. Just a hustle there, and it ends up with two points for Theory on the other end. Buckeyes have been using the glass a lot when driving into the lane. Kohler misses her tray. And now you have Jelani realizing she's got the speed. She'll stop. Gray, another one. Pivots away. Kennedy has it in the corner. And now a reset. 20 to go on the shot clock. 5.35 to go in the third quarter. Jelani open. Falling away. I think she was looking for a foul there at the end as well. Didn't get it, but just a fall away jumper. Able to be hit and... Bowling Green will take a timeout as the Buckeyes are now up to a 10-0 run over the last two minutes. Buckeyes up. Cambridge on this team. Taylor Theory, heck of a ball player herself, and she certainly shows it on the floor. I mean, now in her senior year with Ohio State, the first year she was with the program, she was still finding her footing, mainly used as a bench piece, and worked her way into the starting rotation. She's been one of the best defensive two and three. You know, if you want to go to the guard, she can. If you want to go to the wing, she can as well. She's been some of the best defense and even sneaky offense that you can get in this conference. Now down low, Erica Porter. She's trying to spin, use the tornado to her advantage, and misses right into the hands of Kennedy Cambridge. Go right to her sister on the little bounce pass. Ava Watson going to the scorer's table. She'll check in the next stoppage. Johnny's trying to find a lane. 15 to go, shot clock. Taylor Theory goes for her second three of the day. A couple bounces in the shooter's touch helps her out. Sometimes it pays off to be at home. A little shooter's touch that time for Theory. She stays perfect in the field. Six of six and two of two from three-point range. Ohio State on a 13-0 run in the past three minutes. Bowling Green on a three-minute scoring drought. You can see... 
Chance Gray, she is playing some lockdown defense at the perimeter. Coach Shamil having to bark out calls to get the ball out of her hands. Emily Cecil, three seconds to go, down low, last second shot for Porter, and she just beats the horn. That's one there, Lemuel for the Buckeyes. She bit and tried to come over the top on that pass to get the steal, and it ended up burning her, leaving her man wide open on the block. Over the back foul called on Kennedy Cambridge. And sometimes that's what happens is you realize the situation, you're going to have to force up a shot with under three seconds to go, and, and good for Porter to use that couple days. And you see the scoring run, Ohio State's on 21-4 to this quarter. It's only been about seven minutes or so since then. And Emily Cecil going to drive right to the cup, get fouled on her way up. That's the aggressiveness by Cecil. She gives up a 10-inch height advantage on Lemmy Lull right there. And she just went right at her. Aggressive take and is able to draw the foul. That's what you got to do with the Falcons. Get to the line and score points in any way you can. Well, what does that tell you about Emily Cecil's aggressiveness and her trust in herself? Well, so she has a lot of trust in herself and something that we know she can do. Obviously, former Ohio Division IV Player of the Year, she's got the game, and she's able to get herself to the line and get the two. And I mean, that's the easiest way to do it. You can get to the charity stripe. Some consider those some of the easiest points of the game of basketball. Anytime nobody's around you, you're not contested, it's just you against the cup. And you can use those extra points any chance you can. Good find from Gray, and Leminoff finishes it. Yeah, good two-man game that time. A little pick-and-roll action for the Buckeyes that time. Let me land the hard roll and a good find from Gray on the bounce. Buckeyes love using the give and go, sometimes even use the pick and pop. When they had Rebecca Mikolashikova, they were doing that all the time last season because Mikolashikova could really space the floor better than some bigs you'd normally see. Cambridge went up, tried to get the foul. It was clean defense from Velasco, and now Bowling Green pushing. Velasco back to her, lowers the shoulder, chucks it up. Cecil has it. A reset with 20 to go on the shot clock. One of seven on the last field goal attempts for BG. Velasco drive in, Big Ten logo. Scoops and she's fouled. I it feels like Bowling Green really trying to work their way inside now. They're really just knifing to the hole and getting inside. You take another look at it. I mean, Velasco's got about three Buckeyes in her general vicinity, just able to get to her spot, get to that block, and draw the foul. I think there's a lot that really can be said about that as well, especially with Taylor Theory. That was her first personal foul of this one. And we've seen there be a couple chances where she's had her hand on the ball and it's a jump, or she can get the swipe, or she can come away with it over the top steal. Very rarely do plays like that just happen, and she actually gets fouled. That's how sure-handed she is. And Velasco comes away with two free ones. BG in the bonus as well. Ohio State with five fouls. 2.30 to go in quarter number three. Cambridge, she's wide open. She thought about it. Stood tall like a statue for a second, realizing she's want to find a better look. Now one on three, she's crab walking. Chucks it up and gets the foul to go her way. Velasco was not happy at all about that call, and neither is head coach Fred Shamil. Oh, to add in, or, or should I say, just to add another layer to that, neither was Cambridge really. She, she went to the ground and said, thank you. She's been begging for the call. <laughs> the past few possessions, you could see it on her face, getting a little frustrated, was able to draw the foul that time. She has not had a shot today at the free throw line. She is 6 of 13 from the field and 1 of 3 from three-point range. Shooting at an 81% on the season. Buckeyes back up by 40. Got four rebounds and six assists to go along with their game as well. So just a great all-around game for the freshman out of Nashville. Buckeye's still trapping this far into the game. What does that tell you about their defense? Relentless. And that's all you can really say. The Buckeyes are going to bring it to you every step of the game. It's still the third quarter. I mean, we have a lot of game left to be played, and they're not going to go easy on you just because it's a big lead. They're going to make you work hard on every possession. Velasco went deep into the bag for that one, and that's just a tricky shot. I mean, she's just so smooth inside, just looks so great off the dribble, and with those, some of those tough shots, it's been a big shining star of this Bowling Green offense. Almost poked away. She still got her hand in there. Chance Gray still got it. Watson back in, Lemmy La sets the feet, three ball up, goes and gets her own rebound. It's taken away from Porter. Got as easy it can get with a souvenir for that. Lemmy La tries to get her own. Falls down, she's got it, hits Watson. 
Watson pull up midi. Cambridge rebound, foul on the ground though. How about the hands from Lemilo that time? She knew it off the initially when she shot that three. She wasn't making it. Crashed the board, disrupted the play, and forced a fast break, and she was able to get back and steal it away herself. And it sets up the Buckeyes with a second opportunity on this trip down the floor. I mean, it really has been all hands team at this point. Just the way that the steals are going 13 to 1 on the interception rate for the Buckeyes. Gets it in Lemmy Law. See if they go pick and pop. Shawnee with the screen. Open tray ball. Hits off the window into the corner. Free on the ground. It went right up from the hands of Porter to Theory. Luckily, it went out of the way to stop it, but Porter is not happy with what she just did because Taya Ellis had to foul in that spot. And just Theory is able to get kind of alone down there and able to draw that foul. And that's, we've kind of seen this on both sides on the floor. Both these teams kind of banning in the three-point game and they're just crashing the basket, knifing inside, and really trying to go to work. Almost old school basketball as just hard nosed basketball, get to the cup at any cost. I feel like the Mac, though, is just known for hard nosed sports. I mean, they're playing Tuesday football games on ESPN2. They know all about hard nosed sports, and I, I think that's why a lot of the country really likes the Mac. It's because of how much fun they have. Plus, who doesn't want to watch sports at such odd times in a midweek? I mean, <laughs> Maction is one of the, the peaks of sports. I'll say that. I mean, it's certainly an experience. You, not a day you'd expect football to be played, but you turn on Tuesdays in November, you're going to get some good college football. You're also going to get good college hoops and Porter trying to go for a three-point play. Just Porter working her way inside once again. Bowling Green just getting to the hole. You really working that right side. And Ohio State just hasn't really had an answer over his last two possessions for Bowling Green. They're just getting themselves to the free throw line right now. Layla Harris goes in for Taya Ellis. Officials coming together. I believe McGuff is just asking who checked out. He got the 11 mark, who's Taya Ellis for Bowling Green. A one and one misfire for Porter. Jelani running the offense through her and she's fouled again. Looks like another one's gonna go to Velasco. Trying to get some, I think some trash shot going on. Cambridge walking away. Opening and closing the hands, like, like, hey, they're talking too much. And she's just starting to get in her bag now. Just use that and feed into the aggressiveness. Both teams in the bonus as well. Final 46 points, or 44.6 seconds here in the third quarter. Joanna had 16 points in this one. Taylor Theory with 17. Chance Gray with 18. Amy Velasco with 18 as well for BG. And she sinks them both. Velasco is on the preseason All-Mac first team. We can have another big year with Bowling Green as they're trying to get back to the NCAA tourney. And Ohio State in similar fashion. Got knocked out against Duke in the round of 32 here at the shot. Just at the beginning of the NCAA tourney. Porter down low, five to go. Fancy footwork, the technician. She can't get it to fall. Shot and game clock are dark. Eight seconds to go for Gray. Between the legs with the sauce. She'll drive, strong hand. Can't get it to go. Realizing the time, Porter's just going to hold it. Days for continuing that stretch. Having to reset the shot clock. Was that 27? Well, it was that 30, they needed 27, so there it goes. So now Hall's set and good to go. Ohio State as well, their upcoming schedule. Old Dominion, Utah State, both at Daytona Beach. Then Illinois for the first Big Ten chance. And then Ball State and Youngstown State during some midweeks over winter break. Kohler gets her layup to fall. But we're getting to that point of the season where once school goes out as well, mainly for both of the universities, you are playing anybody in at 
almost all random times, it seems. Yeah, and that's just like kind of the nature of scheduling. Sometimes you just got to play anyone you can because, I mean, you got teams who you mentioned, the universities are out, uh, so you don't want to keep the students around too long. So you're just going to take whatever games you can get just to continue to tune up and stay in shape in December. Glasgow fired a strike to Kohler. She missed, but Porter with a rebound and gets the second chance. Just big body strength inside. Was able to muscle Petty off her on her back and free up the space for that layup inside. Fred Shamil and Kevin McGuff both talked about these in-season tourneys and went, hey, sometimes you want to face harder teams. Sometimes it's the only teams that are available that you're going to face. But regardless of competition, regardless of level, you have to prepare the same way. Always try to go out with the same gutsy finish. And that's what Kennedy Cambridge just did running to the lane. Speaking of finishes, what a finish that time. She was able to glide into the lane that time, took a bump. And, I mean, it looked like she was almost falling away. Take another look at it from above as Cambridge just knocked down no matter puts on the layup. I think this also says a lot about both teams. Is you're early on in the season, you know that it's going to go, all right, we're here in Ohio. Hey, we were just in Nashville. Hey, we're now going to go to West Virginia and then Florida. There's a lot of travel, and that's not even getting towards the conference slate. That's just preseason and non-conference. Sometimes that can get into a team's head, and sometimes it can allow them to start feeling a little bit more comfortable come conference and tournament time. Watson feeds it off a walker and another foul. Kennedy Cambridge two in a row. Back to back, she showed some emotion after that. Fired up after another and one finishes. She got a big appreciation from this crowd as well. I mean, that was just beautiful transition. Ebony Walker had it, gets it past the timeline to Watson, realized she can go herself, the extra bounce pass going baseline to Kennedy Cambridge. And she gets a three-point play to fall. Jasmine Fern comes in for the first time this game as well. She's wearing number 20. She's got the knee brace on the left as well. Velasco goes in, fouled off a little handsy from Ava Watson. That was a good find that time. Velasco, a little backdoor cut action that time, which is able to get her way down the lane, work on Watson, got that step in. Watson trying to catch up, but that's so tough to defend once you're driven past, and all she could really do was foul. 18 points on the day for the Centerville, Ohio senior. And they make that 19. She makes this way the first in this game up into the 20-point margin here on this one. Ohio State's got a couple near there, but Velasco trying to beat them to the case. And she does. I mean, she's averaging... 19.8 a game, so she has surpassed her average. But honestly, at this point, it seems that like this is her average, at least 20. Petty's back in. She does have four personals. Something to keep in mind here. Kennedy Cambridge bounce past Madison Green. Spacing this left side. Now down low, Petty. He's got that crossbar arm going up against Porter. Tries offhand right to the guard in Kohler. That's good defense by Porter. Recognize what Petty was about to do, that little in-to-out spin move. Was able to just take a half step to her right and beat Petty to that spot and get her hands up and play some good defense. Layla Harrison out there. Same with Velasco, who's driving in. Finds Fern. Ten to go on the shot clock. Buckeye defense is pressing. Finds the cut. Strips away right to Madison Green. Green finds Watson. She hit a couple in the corner earlier. Just missed. Offensive rebound for Walker. She scoops it up with no hesitation. She just slipped in there like a thief in the night that time. No one really around her in the lane. And she's able to put home the easy deuce. And anytime you take a souvenir like that, there's, no, there's nobody at the cash register for that one. You just take it and walk away. Fern calls for screen. Said she flips it to her guard in Velasco. Under seven minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. Five to go on the shot clock. PG realizes one second to go. Porter with a prayer. And Petty walks away with a free rebound. To the sauce from Cambridge. Little float game. Gets one tip, but Kohler says, I'll take it. Feed down low Porter. We'll see how she can go against Petty. Try to use those four personals to her advantage, but the defense from Asia Petty stops her. Kennedy, Sauce, 
out. Watson three. Okay. She's been shooting the rock today. Now Watson four for seven from behind the arc. All four of her made field goals have been from behind. And Bowling Green will just take a timeout here. 6.09 to go. Fine. Especially now you realize, hey, we might have four or five more games to go before we face our first conference opponent. You have to use these to be able to watch the film and go, all right, we're ready to get better. And Fern's first shot goes from long range. And Jasmine Fern, who comes off the bench and does what she does best, shoot the three ball. She's now taking 15 field goals on the year. 14 of them have been from three. Madison Green says, I'll do it myself, this time inside the arc, but also using the glass to her advantage. Velasco still calling out signals. See, so trying to get some backdoor cuts. Madison Green, thank you very much. That cookie's hers. Moving right to left with the Buckeye offense. Kennedy Cambridge, cross court Watson. She'll try it in the face of Culler almost. Foul called on the ground. It's on Lauren Gherkin. It looked like she went a little bit over the back of Kennedy Cambridge on that weak side trying to get that board. So I'll keep it here. And Watson, I mean, she's been shooting the ball well. I mean, even her misses that time. That one looked like it was halfway down and popped out. And they're just trying to get her to feel comfortable and acclimated at this point in the offense. And every time she's been on the floor very soon after, she's got the ball in her hands, whether it's off ball or moving it. Green goes up. It's swatted away from the BG defense. But you can clearly see that they have Green out there as the veteran presence at the point guard spot and then Ava Watson as the shooting guard to try to get her a little bit more acclimated with getting her shot at the college level. Off the hands of Petty, and a turnover out of the right side from the forward. And also, when we go back, when we go back to Watson there, just to that previous point, not, now obviously, just the statistics coming in this, she was only shooting 19% from the field. Obviously, just getting her in that shooting guard position you start to make those shots, she's obviously going to get a lot more comfortable. And that's just a big key, and that just shows the trust that the coaching staff has in her just to be able to let her just continue to take that shot. Petty has had some great defense with these four personals. She's doing everything she can. Kennedy tries to use the Euro. She gets fouled as well. I mean, both sides of this ball now for Ohio State, whether you are a starter, whether you are one of the first off the bench, this has been some of the most fluid basketball we've seen so far this season. I mean, absolutely. Just in all aspects of the game, just for the Buckeyes, they feel like they've been pretty well. Even the free throw line, well, as I say, in and out. <laughs> Obviously, the Buckeyes, that was the one thing, if you want to talk about this season, what the Buckeyes could do better, it's certainly been the free throw line. Shooting 63% coming into this one right now over that aspect, although as soon as I start talking about it, there we go. I, I feel like that happens at least once or twice a game, right? So you, you can't put that on you. Everybody knows of the, the broadcaster curse. <laughs> Fern tries again for a three, doesn't get it out for the Buckeyes, but I swear, I, you know, every game I've done at least, I feel like not even basketball-wise, not baseball-wise, not football-wise, any sport, you start talking about some sort of stat, it's going to go wrong, and then you go, well, I'm going to have to kind of wear this one. It's, I feel like it's the only plausible way to get around it. Hand is up. <laughs> My bad. Watson. Okay. She's been hitting them, and she makes it look smooth. I just able to work off that little off-ball screen that time, find herself on the right wing, and she continues to shoot. Confidence is going up now, five for nine from behind the arc. Velasco has been using this thumbs down signal to try to get her offense in motion. What have you noticed from it once she starts doing it? You know, she starts to really kind of just dribble back, look for that cutter inside, or instead of herself, she'll take it herself as well. You saw Fern was the one who she called on that backdoor cut to hit to the near side corner. So she's trying to run the offense under four minutes. Buckeyes just trying to find the best shot they can. Here comes Watson, low block. Now for Green with the jab. Go in, up against the big, stepped away, and cleared from Moxie. Now Kohler at the Big Ten. Setting up. Trying to help the offense. 20 to go on the shot clock, under 3.30. Fern shall try again on the pop and go in off the glass. Maybe Sunday, but the bank is open. Fern just gets a nice little smooch off that glass for her second three. You're feeling it with that one. I feel like that was just off the cuff. You didn't even have to think about that one. Oh, what a swing. Goes out of the hands of Walker. It was a good feed from Kennedy Cambridge. 
It was, it's just Walker just not able to pull that in. And those bullet passes you see between the Cambridge sisters, uh, you even talked about it earlier. They've played together for, you know, 15 years at this point. But it seems that all the OSU offense is just firing on all cylinders, and they got that connection. And another steal, another add another two points to the points on turnovers total as Watson able to get in there for the easy lay. Ohio State now at 30 points off turnovers. And they've induced 24 of them. Final 220. Here's Kohler at about 30 feet. Gets a screen from Moxie. Hits Velasco. With some moves against Watson, she'll step through with a shot, and she's fouled. Two shots coming up. A little behind the back move that time by Velasco. Frees herself up and takes it immediately, although she comes up a little hobbled after that, but gets to the line. You take another look at it. Behind the back, gets it. Velasco two on the way. Emily Cecil awaiting at the scorer's table. Kohler came out as well. Layla Harrison came in for her. Two shots are good. It's 93 to 51 OSU. And Velasco checks off after that one. What a night she had. Finishes with 24 points on 8 of 16 shooting. And she's leading both teams 50%. It's one of the highest she's had in the season so far as well. She had 28 points in 40 minutes against Cleveland State to start the season. Ebony Walker, she'll try with the right hand. Not good to go. Cecil moving, Fern, corner. Rebound Harrison, punched away from Walker. Watson, can she have another? <laughs> Why not? When you're hot, you're hot. And that's what Watson has been today. Feels like automatic for me behind the arc today. 20 points for the freshman. Why not let it fly? It's 96-51 OSU. Kendall Moxie down low against Petty. Uses the window to her advantage. That's a good finish too, because Petty was playing some good hands up defense, which is a little hook shot over a soft baby hook from Moxie. Final minute to play. Still trying to find Watson. Emily Cecil's gonna have to play some closer defense on her as well. Pick and roll comes off, shooting front of the iron. 19 second difference between shot and game clock. Can see Kennedy Cambridge smile on her face playing heavy press defense. She at least breaks up the offensive situation. And now a second and a half difference between shot and game clock on the reset. Moxley, hands Gherkin, open midi, petty rebound. Final 18 to go, Green's just gonna hold it. Buckeyes start the season five and zero, oh, and three and zero oh at home. Hey, what a game, Austin! Obviously, Ohio State another big offensive day, averaging 92 to start the season, and they add to that total of a.